Today we're gonna make another dollar store blaster with an elusive adult size handle. Let's go. Hey, how's it going? Anthony Fro here at Crate Sci-Fi. Well, just when I think that I'm out, they pull me back in. A dollar store blaster. I could not resist this because it has an adult size handle. You never see that. I always have to adjust and print. Now, full disclosure, I did get this from the dollar store. Here's some footage of that. And you'll see $9.99. And this is one of those builds where making it for no reason. I think what I wanna to try to do with this, what I don't typically do in this channel is take it apart and do sort of this cage separate from like the internals and see what kind of look we can get from that. But I, I really have no idea what I'm gonna do, but we'll dig in. But yeah, so it is from the dollar store, but it's $9.99. It seemed like it was worth it just because of, of the handle. So I know this is something that I'll incorporate in a, in a project in the future. But for you, you know, I have plenty of dollar, <laughs> like hardcore $1 bills on this channel. So you can, whatever I do here, if it inspires you, you can go to your dollar store and get something for a dollar or two dollars and then you mash them together but i'm just rambling now because i have no idea what i'm going to do with this so let's just dive in and here we are with the big bag <laughs> 9.99 at the dollar store so i'm looking at this always when i take this stuff apart i'm thinking hmm ha huh, i don't know what i'm doing but i have faith I'm not sure yet if I'm going to keep that. It feels like a pistol. It's weird to have that short, sort of shotgun slider, which I'm a big fan of. Any, anything to make something more active in an actor's hand. But I'm feeling like that's more for the water gun. So I, th I think I'm going to leave that out. Not sure yet. Spoiler alert. <laughs> I will leave it out. But now, again, got to get rid of this big water canister in the back that obviously makes it look like a squirt gun we'll adjust that later and now all the time when you take out these screws i don't know about you but you're always like where there's always one <laughs> that's keeping everything together so i'm searching for that screw because you don't want to take the time to unscrew every single screw and then just get frustrated and rip it apart because one screw is hiding in there <laughs> Ask me how I know that can happen. <laughs> and obviously we're just gonna take out all the water guts. Sometime I take the time to put some weight in the handle, but this is kind of big, so I'm not gonna bother with that. So now I'm just sort of looking at how this is put together. Luckily it's pretty straightforward. All this stuff is pressure fit in there. So now I, I'm going to be saving the trigger. Oh boy, the trigger, gotta have the trigger because you guys go crazy if I don't have the trigger in there. <laughs> so I am saving the trigger. So now this is coming apart pretty easily, so I'm, I'm feeling confident about this because you never know until you get in there. So there's a few stickers. I won't say decals. They're, you know, this thing's very cheap, so there's some stickers in here. So just want to take the time now to get rid of those and... If there's any gunk, sticker gunk, you know, handle it now. I tend to do isopropyl alcohol, which worked fine. If that doesn't work, then I go acetone. And if that doesn't work, then I go on Google and say, well, I can't get this gook off my plastic. And try a bunch of things. So there it is. That's all cleaned up. And uh, only this one little bit of sort of warning text on here, you know. Don't swallow this because <laughs> you'll, you'll choke to death. So just want to get rid of that. Um, typically that stuff comes off pretty easily, but it does look weird if you don't remove that, the warning. That's all good. This is all clean. And like I said earlier, I typically don't take them apart like this, but that looks good. It looks like we're about to do something. So first thing I want to address is this canister now you know not not to sound like a broken record but it's the same thing i like to be sort of clear with you guys about this that i, I don't know what i'm doing right now i'm just sort of 
taking it apart. I know that I need to make it not look like a water canister, but you know, there's no master plan here. Now, I think it kind of occurs to me at this moment, like, oh, there's this ridge that is duplicated. So I think, oh, if I just cut it off along this ridge on both sides, then I can marry them together. And what you'll see pretty soon is, wow, that's a great idea. There's some sort of taper in it where it just doesn't want to work, right? But this is a good example of what I talk about all the time of kind of seeing what it wants to do. So here I'm like, oh, if I invert it, that fits nicely. And even though that wasn't my intention, I, I quickly realized, oh, this is better. Because if I had left that bubble in there, it would still read squirt gun. So now that I've inverted it, it's more interesting. And why is it more interesting? Not because I'm smart and have a great eye. It's because I just sort of go with the flow. And I find that makes up for my <laughs> lack of foresight. So I can just stay true to it. So now I'm just cleaning up this edge. Uh, you know, I, I usually use the, uh, the belt sander like that when it's something like this where I don't want it to be ragged and uneven. If I cut that by hand, it would certainly be that. So now what are we gonna do about this? So now I reach onto my shelf with all my Evil Ted Greeblies that I make. And then that is a container from, what's that from? It's not, you know, it's microwave rice, right? Anytime when you're a maker, Anytime you, you buy any kind of food or anything that comes in a container that you're like, oh, I could use that for paint <laughs> or <laughs> whatever, you always save those. So I have those containers on hand every time I microwave some rice because I, I use them typically for paint. But now I'm like, oh, this, will, this has an interesting little shape where I can kick out the back there, figure something out. So now I'm, I'm in the flow state. So it didn't sink quite deeply enough. So now I'm just sort of carefully cutting off the edge here. And then now that's something, right? So in my head, when I started this, it was just going to be a shorter version of that little bubble butt. But no, this is way better. And then, you know, you don't want to go crazy. So now I'm using hot glue. Typically, I use hot glue when I'm feeling impatient because now I'm again I'm in the flow state and I don't want to stop and wait for glue so I'm using the hot glue because I can just keep this moving now the cost of using the hot glue in this case is going to be like that's in there secure but it's a mess right but again another opportunity I'm like how can I fix that mess so you see me do this on this channel before I, I find this is a great uh, way with sci-fi props to clean up edges it's just, this is that uh, sort of casing that you want to put all your wires together, clean up all your wires. It's like a sleeve for that. You know, it looks like small vacuum cleaner hose. And then I have this uh, dowel of EVA foam. And then that's going to clean up all that goopy uh, hot glue that I just sort of messily put at the bottom. But again, I'll say it, broke a record. But now it's better because I'm in that flow state. I don't know. Uh, this I've never said flow state as much as I have in this video. <laughs> I guess that's the, the word of the video. <laughs> flow state. Tell me how many times in the comments I said flow state. So there. And that just looks cleaner. Looks like something. I'm digging this. And now I'm going to just add this last element. Here I'm doing super glue with the kicker just so we can keep this party going. Liking that, you know, it all looks funky until you, you put a primer coat on there to sort of unify everything. But I know from experience that that's gonna work nicely. And this is way more intricate and way more interesting than my initial idea. And it wasn't really that complicated. And yeah, I'm feeling good about that. So now we gotta sand wood plastic fiberglass what a metal you gotta sand always sanding so here i'm just um getting this plastic ready to accept paint 
if you just spray paint onto like injection injection molded plastic like this it's it's gonna peel off right sometimes if i'm in a hurry and i know this is just a prop for like a background actor that i only need to work for a couple hours i'll just do that but this we're going we're going for a hero prop with this one i feel like and then i got all my emery boards and my sanding sticks and i just keep those on hand there's always going to be some you know crevices and places you can't reach you want to use those i certainly overextend the life of these <laughs> but you know we're always on a budget and then here i have some scotch bright and why i like to use scotch bright or sometimes you see me use steel wool just because sanding all this stuff is so tedious that I'm sure that I miss something. And when I do the scotch bright or the steel wool as the final step, I feel like, okay, I've, I've hit every surface of this object. And it just makes me feel like, okay, I did my due diligence. And, you know, it smooths it all out. So now we want to clean it off, get rid of fingerprints and any sort of fuzzies or dirt or grease. It's, it's, it's interesting these days because I tend to work all the time with rubber gloves now, so finger, fingerprints are not that much of a problem, but it would be grease and dirt on there, so you just want to clean it. So now I'm doing something I, I typically don't do, um, and that's coming up. Here, here I'm just drilling these out just because I found, again, little subtle details, like if those aren't opened up, You'll notice them, maybe you won't notice them, but it just adds a little bit. So here's what I was talking about, a plastic adhesion promoter. I never use this stuff and I've always felt like I should. So this is my first project. You get that at like the auto store. It's for like, you know, if you're spray painting bumpers or something plastic on your car, it helps it to stick. And um, this is my first time using this and it's good. It works good. Now with the plastic dip I've said this before, I like to use this on like hand grips and things because it gives it a, a, a grippable surface that feels good and also reflects light differently, which I like, or, or it does not reflect light. So now we're into Bondo. Because I said I'm going here on this prop, you've seen me fill this stuff with glue before or, or wood uh, filler. Um, Bondo's the best by far. It's a little more involved. It's not crazy, but with these screw holes, I'm going to use Bondo. So you mix up a little bit of Bondo. Again, um, in my other videos, you can see, you know, you can just get the, the plastic wood filler works really good for this. Sometimes I just squirt some hot glue in there. And I, I've talked about this before, like Bondo, I, I'm not very skilled at it. I don't use it enough, but it's such a great, uh, product so what I do is I find when I'm filling these holes or doing stuff if I just use my fingers again because I always have the gloves on these days I just have more control if I was a rock star you know I'd have my palette knife and you know like a little baker's bag and be doing that like oh like I'm know what I'm doing but I don't so I use my finger and it's fine so here I'm just going to use some 600 grit. This is going to give me sort of my final sanding. It's going to polish up all those little corks, those hole fillers of the Bondo. And again, right, it's like I'm not a Bondo expert, but it's the best product to work for this. And that worked fine. I used my finger. No big deal. And then the spot putty is just the like sort of the last finishing touch on when you're using Bondo. It just fills up any pinholes or anything honestly that you did wrong <laughs> it's just another step it's all good and you know like i said i want this to be a hero prop so i'm taking the time to make this nice if this is just like a background actor or a stunt prop or whatever it'd be fine without this but i'm in the zone now going for it so that's all dry that's a couple hours later now we're just sanding more beat up emery sticks sanding sticks <laughs> you really to use sandpaper properly you need to change it a lot right you can't like overuse it and, and guys who sand all the time always talk about like specific brands they like because they don't get gummed up but 
you know, I'm always on a budget, so I just overuse these standing these sanding sticks all the time. But it's, it's fine. It's fine for what I'm doing. So now, um, isopropyl alcohol. I want to clean this up, get it ready for paint. Be careful with the uh, spot putty. Don't saturate it with any alcohol or anything because you could mess it up. Some more plastic adhesion promoter, which I like. And then I just do the quick color, the cheap spray paint for the base coat and that looks good so this is interesting so the chrome blue for the base coat was definitely because i turned my chair around and looked at my spray paint and thought oh i have a little tiny bit i shook the can and it was like oh just enough and i don't you know i get satisfaction out of that because it's like when you're a maker and you hoard stuff it's always very satisfying when you pick up that can of paint that you didn't throw out, there's not enough for a big job. But, you know, a year later, it was just enough to do these. And this looks really good. <laughs> there's something very satisfying about that. So now we're going to do the weathering. I'm just going to give this whole thing a black wash because I just have submitted to the fact that I can only make beat up sort of weathered rustic props that's what i'm good at every time i try to make something like very pristine and like star trek or space 1999 or or kubrick right like 2001 it's just not in my wheelhouse so i gotta lean into my star wars grungy used universe and own it so now the black that was just black acrylic paint water now these are the water-based oil paints which give a nice greasier sort of it's it's a it's definitely a better look but because i wanted to do the whole thing in a wash and black that's why i used the acrylic at first and with these you know it's this is definitely sort of you do it enough and you kind of get your own way of doing it what i like to do is wash slather in the black then I get like the rust colors and I do those sporadically. Cause what I used to do is do too much of those colors and put like a, a glow, an orange glow over the whole thing. So now I'm gonna take advantage of the fact that I took these apart, right? And so this is the graphite powder technique that I use. So there's a gloss black on these parts and now this is just graphite powder. And we're just going to rub it out and it's going to give a cool look. Now, because I said I'm leaning into the sort of beat up rustic look, because I sanded these pieces of plastic, they're not pristine anymore, right? They're kind of like pitted. They have like this weird texture to them, which once I put the metallic graphite on there, I get this nice effect where it looks like, you know, like old pitted metal and i think that's really working right so if i was going to go pristine oh this is a chrome slick side panel fail if i'm like oh this is pitted lived in rustic a plus <laughs> a a i won't give myself an a plus <laughs> and then now the little places where it's not pitted it shines up and I'm very happy with this. Now, this is something that happened organically, but this is the process, right? So now I know uh, that I like that. So next time I do this, I will do that intentionally because now it's a thing in my toolbox. Make a sense? Okay, moving on. There's your trigger. Trigger, people. Your trigger's right there, ready to go. So now I have all my parts laid out knurling i believe adam savage calls this and you look and you think yep and see that pitting like that looks so cool and next time you'll see that it'll be because that's a move of mine <laughs> it's a thing i do but in this case it was a happy accident and then you'll see i have masked off uh part of those tubes that's because I want to hit those with uh, plastic dip as well. So now I hit the whole thing with this rotten stone. It's a very uh, cool sheen that it puts all over everything. And you see here, 
so this is where that slide was, that shotgun slide. And um, like I said, I decided I don't want to use that because it was weird. That was more like for a pump when it was a squirt gun. But because this thing fits so well in the hand, I wanted to make it more like a giant sort of, you know, video game sized pistol, a hand cannon, I guess you'd call it, right? So I'm just, again, like I said, I use that, that tubing, that crimp tubing for a lot of stuff. Here I'm just using it to fill that gap. And what it's gonna do, it's gonna create some texture, some shadows, some interest. Could I have just left it open like a, like a hole? Yes. Is this more interesting? I think so. And then off camera, I put another piece up there. And then here I painted this off camera. But what I did is I painted that, uh, that piece of plastic that looks like hose, that was you know, part of the original thing. I painted it the same thing with the plastic dip, just so that all blends together. And here, because I, I covered up all the screw holes before putting it back together, um, I'm gonna put it together with super glue. And then here's the trigger. Trigger people, are you watching? Trigger, trigger, <laughs> working trigger. <laughs> I don't know, it's just the funniest thing to me. Like, if I went through all my comments, the, the most like upset people get with me is when I don't have a working trigger. Trigger warning, there's your trigger. So, these just pop back in. They pressure fit and those are fine, but because, you know, OCD, I like to overbuild. I'm, I'm going to super glue them anyway. I'm actually quite sure right now in my head I'm saying, oh, great, you don't need to super glue these, but I'm, I'm going to super glue them because I don't know. Those are things I'm going to have to work out on my own. <laughs> so that is looking really good. You know, this is the part of the process where you're like, okay, I tried. It's okay. This is, but this one, I'm like, oh, this is really good. Trigger, trigger warning, trigger. See that working trigger? I want to hear, I, I want to see comments about how happy you are that I have a working trigger. <laughs> so now because I'm gluing the gun together, which is kind of like a big deal, right? You don't want the gun to split in half. I'm using five minute epoxy instead of super glue. Super glue has a, tend a tendency to get a little crusty, a little crackly. Sometimes plastic parts can split apart. So the five minute epoxy gives me a few minutes to muck around to make sure I got a good fit. And then I was able to keep these two screw holes because there's a, a, a shroud, a handle shroud that goes over that. So, you know, that's positive grip. And the rotten stone I'm just going over those seams because if if some epoxy sort of squeezed out, it's gonna be shiny. So I just wanted to tamper that down. So now I just have to glue on the, the hand shroud and then sort of the you know the machine gun barrel on the on the front. And also there's a little cap that's part of that that also uh, keeps the two pieces together. Here I'm just toothing it up so that there's something for the epoxy to seep into. This is my epoxy that I like that I get from the hobby shop. This stuff I just have on hand and I can just use as much as I want. And as I'm filming this right now, um, I look up at the camera and the camera is telling me one minute, two minute, three minute. So that's how I keep track, right? If you're not filming yourself, for sure have your, your phone timer on or something just so that you're not rushing and you're like, oh, I have time to get this right or oh this is going to dry soon let me let me get a move on it's just a good thing to have the the time going there in the background i found and then now i'm just um making sure to get the glue and all those scratches that i made and then that's just going to give little peaks and valleys for the glue to really just uh, adhere better and then this little cap like i said it's keeping the two sides together so that's we got the handle, we got that little cap, and then I got all the epoxy on the inside where the screws used to be. So now we just gotta put in this handle, and then this also I, I painted with Plasti Dip. I always like to make it grippy for the actors. I've, I've said that before. You, you do wanna give the actor something to, to sort of react to, so I find when they put that in their hand, it gets them excited, like, oh, this feels like a real thing, instead of just like spray paint. 
now I'm gripping it and trigger, trigger, trigger's working. <laughs> And there it is. Let's do some beauty shots of this. Yeah, I like that color blue. I'm glad I, I found that on the shelf. And dirty, dirty's good. I like the dirty. I like the pitted. Very happy with that. The reflection makes it interesting. Those, you know, maybe could spin. There's that back piece we did. So much cooler than if it was just the cutoff bubble. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. <laughs> I always love when I can't fit it in the frame. Oh, let me lean back. Yeah, so very happy with that. And it's it's interesting because the first thing I ever made on this channel is a blaster. And this has uh, come a long way. Very happy with this one. I, I feel like I say that a lot. I'm very happy with this one. But this one, I don't know, really works. And like I said, it was all about the adult size handle. And for some reason, I don't know why, but on my channel, whenever I leave out uh, a trigger, it's a trigger. <laughs> That's probably the, the most like negative comments I ever get are, uh, there's no trigger, the trigger doesn't work. I, I don't know what that's about. Obviously, I, I don't think of it, but a lot of people, it bothers them that the trigger is not triggering. So, trigger. Trigger. <laughs> but yeah, very cool. And uh, like I said earlier, usually because I'm doing these for like cheap and expensive props, I usually mask everything off. Took the time to take everything apart this time. Um, for sure, that makes a difference, right? Can't deny it. But do what's best for the situation. We're very happy with this one. This one for sure. I will put on display with my props. Um, so I guess the only thing left to do now is to fire it up. Let me see. I don't even know how to put this one in. I guess we're gonna have to go like that. All right, where is it? Huh. There we go. Whoa. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna have to lean back. <laughs> One more. <laughs> well, as always, I hope you found this video useful. I'll kick it to the avatar. <laughs> hey, I'm just the avatar, but you might want to check out this video. Maybe that video. For sure, subscribe if you haven't. And check out the merch. Buy some merch that really helps. But hey, what do I know? I'm just the avatar. ha <laughs> ha.